On this episode of IFAF, Idaho Falls and Festivus. I got a lot of problems with you people. Oh, you little shit. How dare you? How dare you look so cute? If you've Tinder matched with a sign spinner, <laughs> that's one occupational hazard you can talk about. And was such an obnoxious, horrible fanboy that Charles Dickens hated him. But this is all dirty and transactional. <laughs> it doesn't mean Jack Frost. IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Well, let's start off by welcoming new followers, new listeners, new subscribers, new likers, new IFAF MFers. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, wow. So last mm -hmm. episode, we talked about how we just started marketing the show. Right. And my theory that nothing kills a bad product faster than marketing it. Hi, I'm a cynical Gen Xer. <laughs> And are you, you're, would you define yourself as a cynical? So here's the thing. Huh. I actually fall exactly in the middle between millennial and Gen Z, uh -huh. which is terrifying. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. those Gen Zers scare the hell out of me. Are they teenagers scared <laughs> the living shit out of me? <laughs> right, exactly. Well, and also they're just so entrenched in the memes you know everything is a uh, contract to them which actually the more i talk about it the more it sounds like me so yeah 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 are you talking about everyone has severe anxiety and crippling depression that too yeah mm -hmm. that just it just when i started seeing those memes i sort of <laughs> laughed at them a little bit but then like they're so pervasive i almost think that's part of the problem and don't get me wrong i love uh -huh. a good meme Right. Well, to be There's fair. There's truth to every meme. Yeah. Well, and also everyone does have it because things are just harder now, harder now than they used to be, you know? Well, and we're all on drugs. We're all on the prescription meds, oh, antidepressants sure. and just take some vitamin D and get some sun and some exercise mm -hmm. and, and chop some wood with an ax, kids. Well, with what time? Because you're working three jobs <laughs> in order to afford an apartment, not even a house anymore. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it is a little depressing. What a way to kick off the show. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry freaking Christmas. And happy holidays. Enjoy your new year. We're going to have the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby <laughs> danced with Danny F***ing K. I love that. All right. Uh, so, yeah, this is, a, if you're just joining us, if this is your first, came up on your feed and, and, you, <laughs> and you're like, okay, going to give it a listen, going to give it a try. This show we've determined is basically for people that do live in Idaho Falls or surrounding area. That's what the Idaho Falls and Friends portion of our yeah, of our name stands for could be considered as mm -hmm. um, people who do live here, people who used to live here. We've got a lot of expats listening. What's up, Greg? Right. And thank you for that um, screenshot of or that uh, what do they call those photographs? <laughs> Thanks for that photo of your Condor Man DVD. That's pretty cool. Got to figure out what the difference is between Greg's and Ryan's. Mm -hmm. Won't do it on this episode. No. So people that live here, people that w used to live here, and people that might want to live yeah. here. Got a one listener who's, um, I think, in North Carolina right now and, uh -huh. and considering moving here. And maybe our friend from Rhode Island, MBMF, MBMM. Mm -hmm. Our uh, favorite guy. <laughs> might uh, might move here one day, too. Who knows? Man, can you imagine if he, if he did move here and we just like became best friends? <laughs> That'd be wild. That'd be so fun. <laughs> I love that. He was one of our first listeners on YouTube. Well, and he's just, he's so interactive. He's thoughtful. Yeah. No, he's he's the nice. Best. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he has the jokes. He does. He makes some pretty good ones. He does. If you, if you go through our YouTube comment history. Yeah. I think we could be buddies. So anyway, welcome to the show. Really appreciate having you here. The typical format is 30 minutes of BS and then 30 minutes of, I don't know, somewhat usable content. <laughs> So we're sure. still in the we're still in the ramping up BS part. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you, you're dressed for a nice Christmas party, a nice professional Christmas party. <laughs> I'm dressed as a uh, bad Santa. Yeah, I think that's accurate. Fat Santa. Speaking of marketing, so I think you're pretty skinny, Santa. I did right. <laughs> I did go and do some sign spinning on the corner of 17th and Hit, like I said last episode. I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. I found a way to make it work in my mind. Okay. I'm sort of a Mary Poppins spoonful of sugar kind of guy. Oh, yeah. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. And when you mm -hmm. find the fun, the job's a game. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got to have a Santa suit. So that's what this is. And never have I felt skinnier <laughs> than being in a Santa suit. Right. 
And I didn't, uh, as the great Brian Kelly, uh, one of my favorite mentors, what's up? I talked to him this week. I had a good bro week. I love that. Yeah, I had to just uh, hang out time with a couple friends. Honestly, I think it's really important to foster friendships. Yes, yeah. for sure. This time of year, let people know they're loved. We talked about that last week. Right. You know, show a bro some love. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to say, let's play the tape all the way through when we were conceptualizing and workshopping a, a thing, a bit, a promotion, mm -hmm. a stunt. And what I didn't work all the way through is as I'm driving to the corner of 17th and hit, I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. With great Santa suit comes great responsibility. Uh-huh. What am I going to say if a kid tugs on my Santa coat? Oh, no. And asks for something for Christmas. So I had to stop everything, Google, like, <laughs> how, how do you, you know? And, and what I would yeah. tell the kid is, oh, I'm, I'm a deputy of Santa. Okay. Uh, assigned to this street corner. Mm -hmm. The real Santa's in the North Pole, and he's going to be seeing you on Christmas Day. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Right. That's good. You know, that's a really good way of putting it. And I think that they even mentioned that in Elf. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Because uh, Buddy gets really upset that it's not the real Santa. Yeah. And uh, I think that one of the guys said something like, oh, yeah, it's just uh, an ambassador of Santa or something like that. Okay. Maybe I'm completely misremembering, but I know that there is a Christmas movie where they mention that, and it's brilliant. Yeah. You need to know that... Um I mean, especially in my $75 Amazon <laughs> Santa outfit, uh -huh. it's not very convincing. It's certainly not as convincing as the photos of the Santa in the Grand Teton Mall ad. <laughs> Did I have Are you to bring keep that up them? again? Yeah. But I, okay, so as I was conceptualizing this whole stunt, it, and we'll play you some video here in just a second, I thought, okay, what do I need? I need a sign. Great. Alpha graphics. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You want my credit card? Okay. Yeah. That was easy. Thanks, Alpha Graphics. And then I'm like, okay, Santa suit, Amazon, click. Uh, and then, and what to say if a kid tugs on my thing. And then I thought, wait a minute. Wait, that's a bad sentence. <laughs> on my coat. There we go. On my Santa coat. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go there. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but there are, uh, honestly, though, there are rules online like, uh, you know, you never, you know, don't make the kid feel uncomfortable. Never pull them up onto your lap. Oh, yeah. That you makes know? sense. And if they insist of jumping onto your lap, then you, mom, is that okay? You know, like mm -hmm. all that right. kind of stuff. There, there was a local Santa who was like, we we're actually going to have him on this episode. Right. And he had other commitments. And I completely understand that making kids happy is way more important. Oh yeah. Than our shitty podcast. Yes, absolutely. But like, I guess he got some mom was made to feel uncomfortable that a grown man dressed as Santa was... <sighs> Talking to kids or whatever. You know what? Some people just want to spread a little Christmas cheer, dude. That's too bad, yeah. Yeah, it's sad. And of course, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is um, putting vodka in your beer. No. Well, is <laughs> that seems disgusting. <laughs> is singing loud for all to hear. <laughs> and and um, so, yeah, the one... one Upset parents spoiled it for everyone at Costco one day, but that and I thought that was sad. What but there bummer. are, yeah, but there are some tips like you know, be what was it? Be detached but benevolent or something. I thought okay, oh. I was like okay, I had to get in the mindset of Santa just in yeah. case. And by the way, that didn't happen at all. No, no. So as I, okay, got the sign, got the Santa suit, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm not a professional sign spinner. Mm -mm. I haven't even watched a YouTube video on how to do it, right? <laughs> right. So I'm like, okay, what do I, what would be ideal for this sign? Because it's like 60 inches by 30. I got a big one. Right. Side note, one thing I didn't consider was the slightest of breezes will send you sailing with that thing. <laughs> right. Really, if you would have had a skateboard, that would have been fun. I wasn't. Okay, I, wait. I that forgot be, about our famous East Idaho wind. Okay, but that might be our next little jackass stunt. Okay. Oh, what yeah. if we take that sign, put handles on it, grab a skateboard? I know I've got one somewhere. Uh, if not, I can find one. Or some roller blades. Yeah, or some... I know I've got skates. Get behind a jet engine. No, no, no. I mean, we just wait for a nice windy day in Idaho and we go wind sailing. I love it. I love Let's that idea. do it. I'll do it dressed as Barbie. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, you yeah. do it? I would do it. You okay. know what? If you're taking Christmas, I'll take the summer. Even though 
The sun is the bane of my ginger existence. Well, I've got, because of the 20th anniversary screening of Napoleon Dynamite, I have that killer Rex Quando oh, outfit. You know what? Yeah. It might be funnier if I went as Napoleon. That I could use on the 4th of July. Okay, wait. You're <laughs> right. I should go as Napoleon if I do it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. You still yeah. have the vote for Pedro. Oh, sure. of course yeah, right, I do. Yeah. Of course. And I mean, you remember the scene where he has Kip pull him into town on his rollerblades. Uh-huh. Now, mine will be skates because I'm not going to go out and buy all, all new things, but, but I think you'll get the vibe. So realizing I wasn't the best sign spinner in the world, I, I thought I can just go and do it. It's always more complicated than you think it is. <laughs> right. So right. I thought, you know what I really need is A- a stick, mm -hmm. and then B, something to attach to the sign. And then in the middle of those two things, I need a joint, a swivel joint. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And tell me if this is a genius or an idiot move. So I go on, I'm, I'm thinking, what's got the parts? Now, I know I've got a few handy friends who right now could go to Home Depot and build me that thing in... Five seconds. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. time flat. Yeah, my dad could definitely do it. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I didn't want to ask for help. Right. As MBMM knows, um, I want to do it on my own. I want to try it on my own. <laughs> so I went on Amazon and I searched for 360 Spin Mop. Brilliant, by the way. Uh, thank you. <sighs> As someone who's tried Rub the sign, <laughs> especially, yeah, super smart. And really? it works great. A kid could handle this thing. Right. So... Yeah, I drilled four holes mm -hmm. and got some zip ties and attached our sign to a 360 spin mop. Here it is on the corner of 17th and Hit. Love that. I felt like an idiot. No one cared that I was doing it. <laughs> I doubt anybody was able to even read it with it spinning like that. But the QR codes are there. So if they did take a picture of the goofy guy, <laughs> of the goofy Santa guy spinning the IFAF sign, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe like two people know about it now <laughs> that didn't. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I really think that we need to go with that windy day thing. Yeah. That way it'll, it'll at least be held straight the entire time. Where's a good parking lot to do it? I suppose oh, the mall it's, parking lot. If it's like empty during the day, maybe Edwards, but the mall oh, parking lot for sure. Edwards would be good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah someplace. In, maybe uh, could, could we go to an LDS church parking lot? We could. We could, or if it's during the summer, we could go to a school. I remember when we were playing Pokemon Go uh -huh. a lot, and there were a bunch in church parking lots. Right. I'm sure they got used to seeing people come in, slow down, mm -hmm. turn around, and leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know? you know, and speaking of Pokestops, there was actually one at my college while I was going there because I'm that old. <laughs> 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 and uh, some hoser... Complained about it so much that it got taken down. Wow. Completely ruined all of my streaks. Mm -hmm. I had so much going for me. And then this one freaking person made it just it suck for everyone. Kind of like that mom at Costco. Yeah. What do we have here? Let's crack these open. Oh, yeah. These okay. look delicious. So we've got a couple of Jelly Belly Seltzer Waters that we got at World Market while we were down in Salt Lake. Uh, yes. And this one is very cherry. And we've also got a chocolate flavored one. And it's hard to believe that these are, you're going to give me the cherry? Well, I thought we'd switch. Yeah, I thought. I have a feeling I will ultimately prefer the cherry. So I okay. figured we'd pass it back fewer Smart. times if I started you that. Because I think you're going to like the chocolate the best. I'll take whichever one you don't want. But I do think it's valuable to, at one point, combine the two in our mouth because cherry chocolate is a thing. That's brilliant. Right? <laughs> yes. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Our okay. little annual trip to the fancy place, World Market, mm -hmm. at Station Park. Did we mention? I don't think we actually mentioned Station Park Mall mm -hmm. in the show where we talked about Salt Lake, but it's a mall about the same exit as Lagoon. Right. Yeah. In Farmington. Uh-huh. And it's cooler than any mall in Salt Lake. It's I really like it. Like an outdoor setup that's better than the Gateway because mm -hmm. along with that, it's got hotels and mm -hmm. a strip mall with a Best Buy and a Harmon's right. grocery store. So. Mm -hmm. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is quality. That tastes like chocolate. That's hard to believe. It is zero calories. This is, this I know, is right? basically a LaCroix. Yeah. You know, if you are like it's really craving chocolate, but you're also on a diet, this is a good move. Yeah. It won't quite satisfy you, but you know what? Nothing on a diet does. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 
Oh. Oh, yeah. That tastes like a cherry cordial in the mouth. Yeah, right? In case you couldn't understand my teeth brushing language just now, (laughs) it was you take a sip and then I'll take a sip and then we'll switch (laughs) and we'll take another sip. That's what I said. If you could understand that, then uh, maybe we could be married. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Delicious. That is unbelievably good. I know. It's so good. Why can't... I mean, I suppose we can Amazon these. I wonder what other flavors they have. I didn't even think about other flavors. Would you rather drink a grapefruit LaCroix or this thing? Holy cow. Do you want to know which one I want them to make? A tutti frutti one. All right. That has always been my favorite jelly bean. The little pink one with the multicolored yes, spots. Yes, absolutely. So good. And it's like such a weird flavor. It's like right between bubble gum and fruit, you know? We all know by now that Little Richard was gay. Oh, yeah. You remember the song Tutti Fruity, All Rudy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what the lyrics before that were? Um, I don't, actually. They, they were, and this is no joke, Tutti Fruity, Good Booty. Oh, Oh, really? <laughs> yes, he was talking about... Homosexual attraction. Okay. Well, and it doesn't have to be homosexual. No, 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 no. But Everybody enjoys a good booty these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Mm, tastes better coming up. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> oh, which also, can we point out your little scritchity scratch? Oh, yeah. So, um, do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> no, I got a little, uh, yeah. So oh, Nick. I, a little Saint Nick. <laughs> yeah. Right on my cheek. <laughs> that are nice and rosy. Uh-huh. Um, so the this the sign is made of coroplast. It's unbelievably lightweight. Right. Picture corrugated cardboard only mm-hmm. with plastic, and then that's exactly what it is. Right. I, the minute I got out there, first spin. <laughs> oh no. Caught it with my cheek. Oh. You poor thing. So that's one occu. If if you're if you've Tinder matched with a sign spinner, <laughs> that's one occupational hazard you can talk about. Right, right. Oh, do you ever get scraped up by those things? Because <laughs> ow. Yeah. Cheek was bleeding, and I had to use my white Santa gloves. Oh no! To, to dab. Yeah. If Were I, you able to get the blood out? Uh, I haven't washed them yet. Oh, well, you know, I've got lots of ways to. Okay, good. Women in general do. Okay. To get- <laughs> From all the men we kill. Right. <laughs> right. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow, last episode you said you were a vampire. <laughs> this episode you're talking about killing men. I'm really starting to doubt. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but it reminds me of um the soapy pens of the to-go variety. <laughs> From what we do in the shadows. Right, right. Tide pen, yeah, got it. Tide pen, the soapy pen of the to go variety. <laughs> I love Nandor, Nandor De Laurentiis. <laughs> so funny. Oh man, I love <clears throat> that stuff. It's too bad. Did we hear there's only going to be one more season after this? Yes, I'm so sad. Takawatiri. I know. What are you doing? At least we have I our flag. You. Can we be friends? Can we be best friends? Oh, I would love that. So Can you bad. imagine? I have a friend who's obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> and if we were friends with him, oh my gosh, I could <laughs> I I wouldn't be able to detach her from my hip. She would just constantly be there just in the hopes of seeing him. Open invitation to Taika Watiti only if you ever want to be a guest on a podcast listened to by dozens and dozens of people. <laughs> Here's your invite. Yeah, we will set up the studio specifically for a guest just for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're not, we've got, we've got, you know, you've made it when, you know, we've talked about levels of success. Right. We do have a couple of people saying, hey, can I be on your show? <clears throat> ah, haven't figured that out yet. Right. We have two cameras and two mics and two chairs, and that's about it. It's Sorry, made, dudes. <laughs> it's made for two. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. One follow up from last week. You remember when we made jokes about Frank Sinatra doing cocaine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh? No, not just, yeah? oh, yeah, but you're not going to believe this. <laughs> you know Pablo Escobar, the uh, famous... Oh, of course, the famous drug dealer that they've made countless cartel. TV shows about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has a son named Sebastian who gave an interview, I believe, to some news outlet in the UK. Oh, funny. And claimed that Frank Sinatra wasn't just a consumer, but a dealer. I mean, if you love something, share it with your friends. But he, <laughs> sure, right? Share the joy and the destruction. No, geez. According to Sebastian, Pablo Escobar's son, Sebastian, mm. Frank Sinatra was a better cocaine dealer than a singer. 
Now think about Frank Sinatra's singing ability. Uh, yeah. Arguably one of the greatest of this or any generation. Right. Certainly in recorded history. Right. So he must have been a hell of a Coke dealer. I mean, yeah. But I mean, also, who has the most money to buy Coke? Celebrities. (laughs) (laughs) What was Frank Sinatra? A celebrity. Like, I'm just saying, well, and also, I kind of wonder how much of that he dealt to himself for all of his little fancy parties and stuff. I wonder. And now, when I listen to Frank Sinatra's version of White Christmas, (laughs) it has a completely different meaning in my mind. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Honestly... But that's none of my business. Yeah. Yeah. If it worked for him, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I just sprayed it. You just a little? Not sayed it. (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) Don't. (laughs) Honestly, I love that I was able to make you spit laugh. (laughs) That's a point of pride. I need a. I literally did a spit take just (laughs) now. You literally did. I think I win best person for that. Yes. Oh, yes. Bring this on. Yeah, can I? Hey, we've been holding on to this thing for like six months. So long. <laughs> and never um, never actually used it. So round of applause. Ah! We got this in <laughs> Universal back when we went in July. They had like best husband and best lawyer and best dog sitter. Right. And we're like, no, 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 no. We just want something generic for the show. Right. Show off this award. Carly wins it for the best first person. time. And I wonder to myself, too, history. which I think makes me the extra most bestest person. <laughs> Maybe that's how it should work. <laughs> I think it should. Yeah, we should claim it. And then the other person should either have to deny it or accept it. I accept it. You yeah. are the best yeah. person. This I accept, around. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Hulu has uh, copied my idea. I've invented a lot of things, Carly. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> I, I was aware of some. I have invented, well... The 360 spin mop technique on a yes. sign spinner. Mm-hmm, sign. Which is brilliant. I, I have invented the after shower but before stepping out hand squeegee technique. Oh, uh-huh. So you don't get the rug, right. bathroom rug all wet. I just grab the towel and towel off it in the shower. Uh, that makes sense, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, this way, your towel doesn't get as wet either. Ah, I see, I see. I know that sounds stupid. But You're very concerned with wetness. Then it takes <laughs> longer to dry. And I did live in the Midwest for three years. That's fair, yeah. Where We don't have that problem in the West that you mm-hmm. do in Milwaukee, say, for example. Right. Our towels dry fast mm-hmm. out here in the West. But also, we don't have fireflies, so trade-offs. Yeah. Also, at that point, I would kind of want to do the shake it off technique, <laughs> you know, like a dog. <laughs> yeah, or Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I invented and then Hulu copied mm-hmm. is Happy Hulu Days, where because I, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could watch all my favorite Christmas episodes from all my favorite shows? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Simpsons, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers. Oh, and you know, I think they did that with Halloween, too. They did. Yeah. Happy Huluween. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now it's Happy Hulu Days. Oh, that's cute. One note. Oh, really? Hey, Hulu. When you have a playlist, and I start at the beginning and I want to keep going through the playlist, don't forward to the next episode in the series episodic order. Forward to the next episode in the playlist. Right. The reason I'm consuming your thing is to watch all the things that are relevant to the thing. Yeah. You know her? Right. I I totally get what you're saying. You're so right. Hi. I'm Mike Nelson, critical of myself and therefore others. <laughs> well, and to be fair, too. Come on, on Hulu. Well, and on it's YouTube. Like a YouTube playlist. Yes. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. No, yes. thank you. We're on the same page. Cheers. I love it. But yeah, on <laughs> on YouTube, if there's a playlist, it'll go to the next thing in the playlist instead of just whatever is recommended next. So yeah. just saying, Hulu. You should know better. Welcome, new listeners. And you'll notice we do get upset about very trivial things on this show. <laughs> Well, you know, our lives are just so easy and posh, and we have no problems at all. So, right. you must, know, of course. Must be nice. If you're getting upset about that, then you, yeah. uh, you don't no, have we, any problems. No, we get upset about other things, but we're not going to show that to people on the internet because yeah. we don't trust you. Sorry. I, I am going to bear my claws, <laughs> I think, later in this episode about one other thing. Okay, I'm down. Okay. In fact, let's do it right now. Okay. Yeah. IFAF was named... One of the 20 best Idaho news podcasts by Feedspot. Ever heard of them? Neither have we. <laughs> no, but but not, I... Not BuzzFeed. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> not, it's nice to even be nominated. <laughs> we're just grateful to be here. Right. 
And <laughs> let me tell you about Feedspot. I don't even know these guys. Got an email from some guy saying, hey, congrats, you're on this list. Mm-hmm. And I went and checked out the list and whatever it's got. In fact, let's link to it on this post. We'll, we'll yeah. give them that up front. Well, as, a, as a sign of goodwill, we'll give you that. Yeah. We'll give you, give you what you want. I don't know what kind of rag ass website <laughs> Feedspot is, <laughs> but I think that they are- Raggedy ass? <laughs> raggedy ass and assy. Yeah. <laughs> My two favorite dolls. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I think that we need to acknowledge really up front. Most, I think a lot of podcasters would be like, oh, they didn't hold up the award. Like right, right. Jim Carrey in the mask. Yeah, right. This is an effort by them to garner both uh, attention and money. It's sort of like, can we be, I'll just say this in hushed tones. It's sort of like the Post Register Reader's Choice Awards and the Idaho Falls Magazine Best of Greater Idaho Falls Awards in that it's a money-making venture. Right. It's not really, it, maybe it's a popularity contest, mm-hmm. but it's a money-making venture for them. Right. They want eyeballs on their websites mm-hmm. for all the ads. And so they're giving us this award in hopes that we'll promote it. Now, we've done our part. You yeah. you did your part and you gave us the thing, but this is all dirty and transactional. <laughs> it doesn't mean jack Frost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a level of control I rarely exercise on the I know, show. I know. I was actually really impressed. But I did it for the joke. <laughs> okay. So we were featured as one of the top 20 yeah. best podcast. So that we'll talk about them. Yeah. In Idaho. And uh, I looked at some of the others and a couple of the others were specifically uh, true crime podcasts about the Idaho Four. Which is Brian sort of Koberger interesting. Brian and the Moscow Four. Right. Moscow Murders. Yeah. And yes, it's technically news, but also you have to admit that true crime falls into a different category than news technically. You know, when you win one of those awards, first they say, oh, you're nominated. And then they say, would you like to advertise in between the period that you're nominated and the period mm-hmm. that the results come out? And then let's say you win. <clears throat> oh, congratulations. Would you like to buy a plaque for 150 bucks? It's a money-making venture, these right, things. If you right. really want to know, there's Facebook groups for that. Best tacos in town. Right. I'm sure Life in Idaho Falls, open parenthesis, SE Idaho, close parenthesis, really appreciates those. <laughs> and here's another, okay, again, whether you live here now, used to live here, or, or are thinking like about live here. moving here, one thing you can do is join Facebook groups that are Idaho Falls centric and hit the little, mag- before you ask a question, pro tip, hit the little magnifying glass and search best tacos. Right. If that's a question you have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, chances are it's been answered. You'll see 200 posts mm-hmm. on that given subject. Yeah. Want to give three shout outs to three friends slash listeners just in quick succession. Mm-hmm. The first shout out goes to Jess Jennings. She has been nominated for Country Music Programmer of the Year for two years in a row. Whoa, okay. She started uh, with me, <clears throat> not with me personally. I was sort of the operations manager. She started with Don Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Just started as like an intern, but she had three kids. And I was like, how are you doing this? Because I don't think the internships paid shit. Right. If at all. It, it's really common for them not to. At that time. Right. We pay you an experience. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but she, I, I watched her start from like, not just nothing, like in a deficit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, she, I, I just, uh, I don't think I went home every day, but a, at least a couple of days a week going, I don't know how she's doing it, but God bless her. Mm-hmm. And now she's at the top of her game, like in the country, literally. Crazy. Way to go, Jess. And yeah. by the way, and my offer still stands. If you want a couple of Teton t-shirts for you and Farm Boy and Amy, you let me know. Farm Boy? Yeah, that's her husband. <laughs> So cute. Okay. He's the greatest. And also, the fact that her husband is someone that you call farm boy proves how very country she is. Yes. You know, it's through, it's running through her veins. It is. So, Jess, congratulations. I knew you could. <laughs> you know I always believed in you. She knows it. And this is, now that I'm saying it in retrospect, it sounds like, oh, you're just jumping on the Jess band. Oh, no. <laughs> she knows I believed in her from the start. 
Well, I mean, yeah, if she can do anything with three kids, then she's invincible, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And maybe it was four. I don't know. <laughs> you, honestly, especially if it I was four. I remember some details. Yeah. Uh, then I also- More than one kid. <laughs> I also want to thank Whitney, Virgin, from Virgin River Land and Cattle Company, uh-huh. for sending us- this photo of a West Bank menu from 1963. Oh, that's cool. I thought you were going to say that she sent us some steak. <laughs> and of course, I had to go to the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index Inflation Calculator. I'm impressed <laughs> by how succinct they kept that. That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> to find out that a dollar in 1963 is like $10 today. So look at this West Bank wow. menu from 1963. There's a fried chicken dinner for $1.55. Oh, so you can just, you imagine? You move the decimal point over and add a zero. Mm-hmm. So it'd be $15 today. Yeah, okay. That sounds about right for a meal. Yeah, they had a, right? Yeah. For, for a chicken dinner, fried chicken yeah. dinner. Well, it looks like four pieces of chicken. Yeah, well, and out at a restaurant too. Yeah. You know? I mean, I would say that the average is probably right between like well, like twelve and twenty-five. A burger for fifty-five cents, which would be Oof. five fifty today. Yum. I mean, I don't know about you, but I paid. Let's see, for a double cheeseburger, baconator, whatever from mm-hmm. Wendy's today. I think it was eleven bucks. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think last time I went to Carl's Jr. and I got their uh, guac- guacamole bacon burger, I ended up paying about just under ten bucks, somewhere in there. And about 25 years later, I would sit at the West Bank with my okay. waiver friends that all got pushed into lockers for listening to Depeche Mode and Erasure instead of Motley Crue and Def Leppard. Which is so dumb because like Depeche Mode and Erasure are so big now. John, Bill, like, Nate, sometimes Kevin. Oh, I love Kevin. Which also, what a great name around the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because Home Alone. Kevin! Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Kevin, Kevin sent us... Some of his favorite things and some of my favorite things because he just came back from Berlin. Of course he did because he's the most interesting man in the world. Amsterdam, Netherlands. Kevin, I forget already, buddy. I want to go there and get some of those little wooden shoes. (laughs) This is the thing I'm most excited about. Sorry, Santa, you're going to have to lose your head for this bit. (laughs) This is a Regalin or something chocolate hollow Santa. It's like the Santa equivalent of a hollow Easter bunny. Nice. It's the best chocolate I've ever tasted. It's so good. And then he wants us to try these um, lint batons Ooh. that his mom's Bible study loves. Oh, I love that. And he just sent her a whole batch. That's so cute. Kevin, how much have you spent in postage? <laughs> because the other thing Kevin sent that I consider a huge bonus is this stuff. <laughs> Bubble wrap. <laughs> You are a child. Let's do let's do some ASMR. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Give it a good old twist. Because I'm definitely the younger of the two of us. And you are definitely Sorry. the less mature. <laughs> oh, I've, I, I've noticed that too. <laughs> Which I love, personally. But he also sent us one more thing. <clears throat> uh-huh. Never have I identified oh. with the name of a chocolate more than this. Mini Dickmans. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're, they're big in, in Germany. Big, <laughs> big in flavor. <laughs> we have Mini Dickmans. <laughs> and I asked him, is, does that mean there's a Max Dickmans? And he a said- A Mega Dickman? I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Ultra Dickman? Yeah. He said, I guess there's a Maxi Dickman. Okay. Here's the deal. Kevin, w- we are going to try these. We can't try them on this show because we've already spent way too much time- <laughs> I promise you, we will try them. I will get back to you. And um, absolutely, yeah. But it'll be more personal that way. Best chocolate in Idaho Falls. Ooh, I would have to say Florence's. And yeah. if if you're non LDS, get yourself to Deseret Book <laughs> and get theirs. They're amazing. I mean, the one the little truffles that they make at Love at First Bite are pretty great too. Yes. I mean, it, it's hard to choose a favorite. And I saw, I've got this in my like way back burner. I saw something for Thor's chocolate. We have to get it at some point uh-huh. and they, they'll mail or deliver it. Okay. But uh, they certainly seem to, I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible, because if you don't believe in yourself, who will? They believe in themselves. Okay. They really sell it on their website. Like there's a whole... Five paragraphs of why they're really? the best. Okay. And so we're going to put them to that test. So get ready, Thor. Yeah, you know what? I'm down. If you see an order from a guy named Mike, it might be me. 
We might have to put it under my name now. And we all know how critical I can be. (laughs) One way or another, we're getting our hands on it. Don't even think of canceling. I got to try it. Whatever you've done, you got on my radar, Thors. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out. Yeah. Remember we talked earlier this year about Uh the Battle of the Sled Hills, Ryder Park at the corner of Sunnyside and the Snake River. Mm -hmm. And there's one that's nosing its way forward right now. Idaho Falls Snow Park. Just Mm -hmm. you go all the way down Lincoln, turn right on Bone Road. Drive three minutes and there's Idaho Falls Snow Park. At this point, Ryder Park is the clear winner. Right. Just in terms of volume of snow. Right. Yeah. For something called Snow Park, there's not much there. What? Okay. They've made a lot. They're uh-huh. going to make more. They're open. Both parks are open. And boy, the minute it does snow, the minute we do get a snowstorm, it looks so Ryder Park is the best right now when there is no snow. Look in the background mm-hmm. of this video. You'll see across the street. There, there's just no snow. Right. Uh, except for the snow they made. And they made a lot, an impressive uh-huh. amount with three or four snowmaking machines, right, whatever they have. Right. But they've got a river right there they can suck the water out of. Mm-hmm. Idaho Snow Park, I have no idea how they're doing it. Yeah, I, don't, I think they're kind of relying on Idaho to be Idaho. Right. Yeah. And it's not this year. It's not. Have they not heard of global warming yet? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but you know it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. Kn- you know we're in By for 90 January? days of, are you kidding me? By January, it will be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, by the way, this is our last episode. Of the year, I know. Of 2023. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. So Yeah. Our next episode is going to hit you on New Year's Day. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, in case we haven't made it very clear, this is Ryder Park at Sunnyside in the Snake River. Here's some video. People sledding, having a good time. Mm-hmm. And this is the Idaho Falls Snow Park out on the Bone Road. Take Lincoln to get there and then turn right on Bone. That's going to be better than Ryder Park when it snows. But right right now, Ryder Park is better. Yeah. Okay. Now, since we did just mention that this is happening on Christmas, should we? Let's save save the Christmas presents for the very end. (laughs) Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Santa has visited the IFAF studios. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, we have a couple of presents here. You've got one for me over there. I've got one for you over here. Uh We're going to find out what Santa brought us. (laughs) That's exciting. I can hardly wait. Please, Christmas, don't be late. (laughs) 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 Okay. That's dark. (laughs) But but other than sledding, what do you do during that empty week between Christmas and New Year's? I think um, one great idea I heard in the past was you... You start a puzzle on the coffee table, mm-hmm. right? And then when people walk by, yeah. it's a really great put your phones down activity. Yeah, I agree. You know, people walk by, they start to get engaged, make conversation, whether it's 15 minutes or an hour and a half. Right. You know, we're all working toward a common goal. I love that. It is nice. Yeah. I agree. Now, my family every year does a Christmas competition and... Uh, We've done a couple so far. Uh, Some of the more memorable ones was one time we did a stocking decoration competition. I did mine like the leg lamp from A Christmas Story and didn't win. Oh, what? Bunch of crap, just saying. Yeah. Uh, We also did a- You were robbed. (laughs) I was, dude. (laughs) We also did a gingerbread house competition. My mom and I worked as a team for that one, and we made a gingerbread castle that I swear was like two feet tall, maybe like a foot and a half wide- I made a Rice crispy Dragon and covered it in fondant. We had little gingerbread men being tortured in the dungeon. Pretty sure we had a princess somewhere. Like, we went ham on this thing and didn't win. Okay? Isn't there that one aunt who always wins? No, it was my granny. Oh. It's always granny. Oh. Probably because everyone loves her the most, which I get because she's the best. Well, and she might have the most time and life experience. Okay, but here's the thing. Her gingerbread house that year... Was a pre-assembled set from a box, okay, that she just decorated to look like a beach shack, which is a cute idea. And also ours was much more impressive. Ours should have been on like TLC or something, (laughs) you know, like Cake Boss. (laughs) But anyway, uh, this year it's going to be a nativity scene creating slash decorating competition. I would like to do it. And if I don't, I don't. And you know what? If I don't have time to do it for the contest, maybe I'll just do it for funsies. And there are lots of other celebrations happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, The winter solstice was on Thursday. Festivus was Mm -hmm. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of problems with you people. The (laughs) pole, the feats of strength. 
Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen that Seinfeld episode, hilarious. <laughs> I, does it still hold up? We watched it the other night. Does it still hold up? I think so, yeah. Okay. But back to solstice, the winter solstice you see mm-hmm. happened this year on December 22nd. What happens is, or what happened is, the hunter-gatherer societies from two to 6,000 years ago-ish, mm-hmm. depending on if you're a mainstream archaeologist or a- <laughs> uh, An alternative some, archaeologist. Somebody who watches Ancient Aliens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but- The sun seems to sit still in the sky for three days. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any, usually the sun gets higher and higher. The winter solstice is the shortest day, longest night of the year. And for three days, tell me if this sounds familiar, the sun dies in the sky. And then after the third day, it rises one degree. Um, So you could say it is resurrected. You could. And- you could mention, I don't know if this is appropriate to mention on Christmas Day, on Jesus' birthday. It's his birthday. That he's not the first solar messiah in history. And this is mm-hmm. why I'm such a fan of pre-history. Right. You know, I mean, imagine how important the sun was mm-hmm. to hunter-gatherers. Right, who had no alternative light. Right. Yeah. So just mentioning that. And it, okay, speaking of pre-history, let's talk about Temple Mount for just a quick second. Okay. Um, Temple Mount is a location in Jerusalem where I believe Solomon's temple was built and then destroyed Mm -hmm. and then rebuilt and then is the subject of reverence and debate among three of the world's biggest religions, Mm -hmm. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Mm -hmm. And they're all sort of fighting over it. Like, no, that's ours. No, that's ours. No, that's ours. At this point, I think we need to just split it into thirds. <laughs> Aha! Thank you, King Solomon. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's what I kind of roll my eyes and laugh at and um, ponder because here are these people who all believe this site has incredible importance. Mm-hmm. Instead of seeing that as a commonality, they see that as a point of... Contention. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think... After all these thousands of years, that we'd go, wait a minute, we all basically believe that the same thing, that this was the most important site in our religion. Is there something, because I don't know about you, I wasn't around 2,000, 3, 4, 5, 6,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. They believe, you know, we, we think that the cradle of civilization is somewhere in Mesopotamia, somewhere right. near the Tigris and Euphrates, perhaps the Garden of Eden is underwater. So I just, I, I kind of laugh at that going, it's sort of like the meme, have you ever seen it? We'll, we'll throw it up here on the screen. It's the meme where the two religious armies are opposing each other and picture, if you will, a crude line drawing of a rabbit. Okay. Yeah. And um, one of them is saying our God is better than theirs. And the other side saying basically the same thing, because if you point the flags one way, they look like rabbits. If you point the flags another way, they look like ducks. Or something like that. I I have that probably 50% right. Mm -hmm. But they're both talking about the same thing. From a different angle. And so that's my message this Christmas is, let's look for the... Commonalities instead of the contention. Thank you. Well said. Thank you. My mom is dead. We got got a lot of flack and a lot of views on that one. Yeah. (laughs) Call back. (laughs) Okay. So I'm so excited about this because, you know, one of my all-time favorite foods is soup. Not just soup, but tomato soup. Specifically tomato soup. I love me a tomato soup. It just feels like childhood and Christmas and wholesomeness and goodness. It's just the best. Uh, But the funny thing is I actually heard about this way, 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 way back before it opened from Jolyn Thomas's, my, you know, friend over at KID, her husband. I don't think he knew who I was. John. Yes, John so, Thomas. So John's a pretty famous attorney at this point. He is. Not only did he represent Christopher Tapp, mm-hmm. and that was successful. Right. He represented Lori Daybell Vallo, mm-hmm. and we all know how that turned out. Right. And I want to point out that that's so important. At the end of the day, the fact that he represented her and was able to provide her sufficient counsel meant that she couldn't file for a mistrial. Right. And that, that means that she's going to stay in jail. Well, and also someone had to do it. Someone had to do it. And she's in jail. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome. So justice was served. (laughs) Yeah. So I happened to be in a conversation with him a while ago 
back before we knew who each other was, we just sort of like ran into each other on the street. And he mentioned that he was going to open something called the Give Back Soup Shack. And I was like, oh man, I'm so excited because I love soup. And also, can you like send me a link or something (laughs) when you do? Because I've got this podcast and like, if it's good, I'll say something. Anyway, we finally had a chance to go and it was pretty freaking good, dude. It was delicious. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I'm sort of a hungry man. Yes. And I don't think soup is a meal. But for me, it was a nice snack. <laughs> Let's <laughs> it see. Was, it was really good. You got the tomato basil bisque. Of course I did, because tomato soup is my favorite. I got the velvety sweet pea with Cora Buddha ham. Oh, which was so good, too. So John and Jolyn own it. Jacqueline and Mac run it. Mm-hmm. And Mac, the chef, takes this really seriously. Yeah. He explained to me about how some king of England gave some black pigs to a Japanese emperor, and that's the Kabuda ha- Cora Buddha ham. And-, and also, JoLynn mentioned when I went in to do an interview for KID about Christmas uh, that her um, daughter and him brought those prosciutto sandwiches over to dinner one day. Yes, the French Americana melt. We also got one of those to dip right. in the soup. It was the perfect crunchiness. So good. And the fact that they use sourdough. Every good chef uses sourdough. Agreed. It's just, it's got so much flavor. And that prosciutto, and I believe oh. it's, uh, you You like the Beaker, Beecher cheese? Uh-huh. Thing? Yeah. Yes. It was It was that. Yeah, the flagship. So it was, a, it was just a hot take on a mm-hmm. ham and cheese. Oh, it was so good. Back to the croque monsieur. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the crunchy French mister. Call, the crunchy gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, she basically said that they brought that to dinner one day, and she was like, this is amazing. You should add this to the menu. And she was so right, by the way. Yes. Because it was perfect. It was the fanciest grilled cheese and tomato soup I've had in ever, as a matter of fact. And do you see how they put the cheese on the top of the cup, and then you take it off, and you take the lid off, and then you put the cheese on the top of the soup, and it's amazing? The presentation was incredible. Yes. That's, yeah. That's, Uh I mean, I was blown away by it. I was not thinking, I was thinking, hand me a bag, and yeah, even the spoons were great. They're great soup spoons. Oh, they're beautiful, too. They're these big, long, and they look like real metal. I thought for sure that we were driving away with their spoons that we should not have been driving away with. And then I picked them up and I was like, oh good, they're plastic, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, but the soup was amazing. I have one note. Oh, you do? Now here's the thing. This is a very personal note. I don't know that everyone will agree with me. Okay. Now tomato soup is a really fine line because it's right between tomato soup and marinara sauce. You know, it's really yes. easy to you tip have to over. Be, mm-hmm. Um. They did not get into the marinara sauce category, thankfully. They tasted fully like tomato soup. It was great. Now, the one thing is, I love my tomato soup to be just a a hint cream here. And I did throw like a tiny, tiny little dollop of uh, sour cream in mine. And that did the trick. And I do think it kind of did the trick. So your one note for the Give Back Soup Shack is maybe make it a little creamier. Maybe throw just a little bit of sour cream in it or something. And if they're smart, they won't do any of this. Never yeah. pander to the gallery, people. You know what? Instead, how about this? You do you. Offer sour cream. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, you want to thicken it up? Yeah. Yeah, you want to cream it up, baby? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like those little uh, packets that you can get from Wendy's that are like weirdly shaped? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Offer me one of those. I will be a happy camper. Okay. Because really, the soup itself was amazing. The flavor was there. Yeah. You know? It was a great experience. So glad we tried it. And you know what's super cool mm-hmm. is do they have a they have a different charity every month? Yeah. That's the give back part of right. the give back soup shack. Yeah. And this month, it I think the month of December, it's the Bonneville County Jails Ignite mm-hmm. program that helps inmates. Right. Super cool. Here's the menu. So give back soup shack. You are I F A F this week. Chris Pie 5. Whoosh, 20 on finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss, literally. Emphasis on the chef. Yeah. Yeah. To you. Fantastic. So good. Give him a try. Honestly, that's split pea soup. Mm. Delish. I think I like that even better than my tomato soup, which is shocking for me. So good. Yeah. I want a 50-gallon drum of that. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. I just want to like dispense it in my coffee cup in the morning, <laughs> take it to work, and just sip it like it's you know caffeine, yeah. but it's just soup. How's that coffee? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay one other thing that we sort of alluded to last week but i want to really um double down on this week is why love actually is the greatest christmas movie of all time 
For adults. For adults. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I will say, I think that Klaus is the best Christmas movie for like families. That, I have to say that was a surprising hit to me. Yeah, it was good. Link. Yeah, it was good. Surprisingly and good. And you know, out of all of them, that was the one that I was like, I got to watch that this year. We've got this sort of Christmas afterglow for a week mm-hmm. in between Christmas and New Year's. Right, right. Well, so you, long as it's December, it's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I will still listen to Santa Claus is Coming to Town after he's come to town. Right. You, you got know? it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Love Actually a little bit. Now, by the way, it's on Netflix until the 31st, so you can enjoy it during that nice Christmas afterglow. It's got 11 different storylines. The reason it's so good- Which feels like, that seems like it should be too many. Like we sort of mentioned earlier when we were talking about Temple Mount, Mm -hmm. shouldn't it all be about love? It's all about love. You hear people on their deathbed saying, it's all about love. Don't get that twisted or confused. It's all about love. And love actually is about- I don't know if it's about 11 different types of love, but it's about unrequited love. It's about Uh love that spans language Mm -hmm. and countries and race. Uh Uh-huh. And it's- Love for those who've passed and those who might be? Yes. Social status. Love. Yeah. uh, yeah, Love for long lost loved ones. Yeah. Even lust. Yeah. It's got some (laughs) lust in there. Which is, I would say- In a fun, sexy way. I would say it's a component of- Love. Yeah, some and, love at least. And the lust isn't between the two porno stand-ins. <laughs> right. That's as, Not porn stars. Right. Stand-ins while they're checking <laughs> the white balance and the lighting. Yeah. These two people are together during these <laughs> completely nude scenes. <laughs> and But their love story perhaps is the most tender. It is. Remember to my point earlier this year about teenage summer mischief movies. Yeah. When you get past all the ribaldry. You're right. And and the... um, Well, and maybe also part of our point with uh, uh, Naked naked Attraction. Yes. When you get past that, when you address that all up front, then the rest is really sweet and sentimental. It is. It is. And that's why Love Actually is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. I have another point Hmm. to also prove why it is. So... One thing that I really like about it as a Christmas movie, especially as an adult, is that it doesn't really feel like a Christmas movie for at least the very first part. Right. Until until the characters start to choose to do things in the name of Christmas, you know, because it's Christmas. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you're a kid, okay... All of the adults are making the Christmas magic for you. You don't have to do shit. (laughs) Right. But when you're an adult and you're the one making the Christmas magic, it doesn't feel that magical. It doesn't feel like Christmas until you choose to do something in the name of Christmas. You choose to have your little family Christmas competitions or make a nice meal and sit down with the people that you love or give gifts to those that you care about. Do you, do you remember those little, it feels like Christmas. <laughs> right, yes. Vignettes on the uh-huh. radio with uh, yeah. was it? Gip Forster. How did I bust that out? <laughs> I always thought they were way too, I always thought they weren't music. Right. Not to be a consultant too much radio stations, but yeah, remember, you pay for that. when you're a music radio station and you're doing something other than playing music, you're not giving the people what they tuned in for. Right. <laughs> it's, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> How many rants is this episode is that for me? <laughs> you know what? For such a loving and warm and bright Christmas episode, it's kind of <laughs> it's a little kind of hateful. A lot. But right. back to my point about <laughs> Temple Mount, Jesus is the reason for the season, at yeah. least this cycle. Yeah. It doesn't matter who it is, really, as mm-hmm. long as it is. Do right. you know what I mean? Exactly. At the end of the day, really what we're talking about is the embodiment of love and kindness and mercy. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I do think that this is a time for and mercy. Sweetness. Yeah. And kids playing the drums to get a chick. Right. And that too. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's he's also- so cute he's at it so too. so cute. Oh, which is so mad. <laughs> I mean, I can't say it because I'm not a white woman, but I want to eat his face. I know. He's so cute. You just want to smush the f*** out of it. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Oh, you little shit. How dare you? How dare you look so cute? See, she can say that. (laughs) She can totally say that. I can't. White female privilege. (laughs) But yeah. And you know, it's also about friendship love. Yes. Brotherly love. Sibling love. Yeah. Like between... uh, 
Bill and his manager. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah. Which, honestly... That's one of my favorites. I kind Kids, think- buy this festering <laughs> turd of a record so your uncle, <laughs> uncle Billy can have, you know, do cocaine off of Elton John. There's cocaine right, again. Right, I know. <laughs> well, you know, it is a white Christmas, dear. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Here's the thing. If the snow doesn't make it white, we can do it ourselves. <laughs> If you don't want to make it yourself, store-bought is fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Frank <laughs> Sinatra is smiling in his grave right Aww, now. <laughs> I love Frankie. I hope so. You know what? And honestly, he has the best Christmas music of all. Oh, he does. In fact, I think maybe on the way to, I got a thing to go to, but on the way tonight, I'll be listening yeah. to Frank Sinatra's Jolly Christmas. Gotta. Because it's gotta. just fantastic. Right. I agree. Last thing before we open Santa's presents. Right. Getting rid of your Christmas trees. Too soon? (laughs) An important factor, though. And now that you know about it, you'll have time to think about it. So the city of Idaho Falls, link in this post, has 15 Mm -hmm. different collection sites scattered throughout the city for you to dispose of your Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Hans Christian Andersen's The Fir Tree? That whole story? Do I? That one I don't. He sort of anthropomorphizes a Christmas tree. And I think the whole moral of the story is the tree growing up... Mm -hmm just wants to be grown up. Right. And then like any Hans Christian, Hans, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm doing the American bastardization Hans of his is name. Fine. Anyway, uh, like, like he's the guy that wrote The Little Mermaid. Oh, he was sad. Which has a way different ending than the Disney movie. Yeah. But, you know, basically the fir tree does finally get to be full grown. They chop him down. And while he's burning his firewood, reminisces about how he wishes he would have enjoyed his time as a growing fir tree. Oh. A little side note on Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. First off, he was a sad, sad man who never found love and who always dreamed of it. And it was so sad. And also, if you saw his face, you'd get it. Oh. <laughs> I know. And also- Sort of an Edgar Allan Poe type. Uh, Edgar Allan had some smokiness to him. I don't That's know what true. you mean. He was hot. He had a little snape going on. <laughs> yeah, he, had, yeah. he was the original yeah, emo. He had, he had some sex appeal. He was fine. Hans Christian did not. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and apparently, there is actually a board game- about what a terrible house guest Hans Christian Andersen was to Charles Dickens. Really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that funny. Huh. Appa- and this is an actual thing that happened. He actually went to stay with Charles Dickens because he was a huge fan of his and was such an obnoxious, horrible fanboy that Charles Dickens hated him. Never let that guy in the house ever again. <laughs> right. And, wow. And now there's a board game about it and I actually really want it. So maybe for my birthday. <laughs> and I saw, okay, all right, which is coming up in January. It is. It yeah, is exactly you, a month after you Christmas. You unfortunate child. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no. January 25th, one yeah. of my favorite days of my life. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> For at, two reasons. <laughs> at least it's not on Christmas because I know some people yeah. who have Christmas birthdays right. and it's like oh presents once a year and that's it at that point Sorry, I would buddy. be like <laughs> at that point I would request a half birthday right like, be in, like can we just celebrate my own birthday yeah yeah <laughs> and I kind of thought about that we're coming up on our six month anniversary of this show and mm-hmm. I, th- I really think we should sort of time adjust it because we had been doing it for six weeks before right but yeah I think I think our birthday should be like June some June twenty fifth. Yeah, and then our six month anniversary should be December twenty. Basically, Christmas. Yeah, I love that. But I saw a debate online where somebody said, "Oh, Christmas trees are purely commercial. They never existed for any reason." Uh, no, eh, wrong. Incorrect, moon to my dude. So wrong. For as long as mankind has been able to exist in wintry weather, mm-hmm. so had the, co- the capability to make shelter and clothing. We've been bringing green things indoors. Yeah. That's not, Christmas trees are not a commercial construct. Yeah. Christmas not- trees are a hope for um, the sun to rise again yes. after three days mm-hmm. in the bleak midwinter. Christmas trees are actually based on the pagan tradition of decorating trees during the winter solstice, yeah. usually with things that were edible for the little critters. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So anyway, disposing of Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, City of Idaho Falls has 15 locations. Link in this post. City of Ammon is doing something so much cooler. Mm-hmm. Dri- in fact, I even know. if you're in Idaho Falls, I bet, all you got to do is drive to the extreme west side of McCowan Park in Ammon and dump your Christmas tree there. Now, both Idaho Falls and Ammon are requesting that you take everything off of it first, right. Right. of course, like a good citizen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. We only want to burn dried dead organic plant matter only 
You can drop it off on the far west side of McCowan Park in Ammon because on January 20th at 6 p.m., they're going to burn them and have a giant bonfire. Such it's so cool. Right? That sounds awesome. You know, they've got they've got the caution tape and Mm -hmm. the fire engines all around. It's a very responsible burning. Right. It's really cool to see. That sounds really cool. If you've ever thought, how cool would it be if I just kept my Christmas tree around until, you know, the end of January and then burnt it? Now you can find out. Watch that times a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. We'll Absolutely. To, hopefully we can get some video of that when it happens. Oh, I can't wait. One other option to, to dispose of your trees that I saw comes from one Tessa Browning. She's a Girl Scout who wants to go on Girl Scout adventures. Mm-hmm. We've got her info up right here. She will. You message her with, and she's got her contact info, your address, the date and time, and you leave your Christmas tree out, she'll come pick it up and you pay what you think it's worth. Oh, I love that though. That's so sweet. How cool is that? Yeah. Great idea, enterprising young lady. Right. Now I, honestly, now I wish I didn't have an artificial tree. Yeah. I feel terrible. I wish I could help her out. I think you probably still could. I think her her Venmo info was in there. Oh, okay. Well, Mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe you're going to get a little freebie from me. How (laughs) about that, kid? That's right. No work required. All right. We're going to wrap it up. With uh, Christmas presents. Santa came. Yes. We've been so disciplined this entire episode. We've been eyeballing him. We've been side-eyeing him. Here we go. Um, And, you know, I think that Santa took a little inspiration from one Whitney that has commented on many a thing. Oh, Uh, you think so? I do. I do. I think that you'll find that very intriguing. This feels like a poster. (laughs) What what does that feel like? (laughs) Um... Feels like a sweater. Oh. Oh. One, two, three, go. I guess go. we're going to find out. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Oh, man. I'm. This seems so simple to unwrap. Oh. oh. It's cats. <laughs> it's a little cat Christmas sweater. Oh, okay, yeah, that's out. cute. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it so much. Ah! Let's see. Meowy Christmas with Leon Coco, my little kid. Meowy Catmas. Oh, I'm stupid. Sorry. <laughs> and it's got, yep, yeah, Leo and Coco. You've heard us talk about Leo and Coco. Here are some fairly A very accurate de- depiction, I'd say. Fairly accurate <laughs> depictions of Leo and Coco. Leo's oh, a fat <laughs> I orange love and white Coco's tabby. giving the little side eye. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> yeah, that's so her, is the thing. Santa oh. really knows you. He really does. What a, what a guy. Man, it just makes me love him even more. <laughs> um, I think I know what this is. You know, I can you wear s- this with those socks that my mom gave me a couple of Christmases ago that have uh-huh. Rango's face on them, and then I'll have the trifecta. Okay. Now, that is a Christmas fit. <laughs> this poster is pretty tight in this hole. You want some help? Oh, no, wait. I know. I just put two fingers in and ah. <laughs> gave it a little nope. twist. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> We're not having another in and out episode. <laughs> no. Oh, this is what I think it is. Okay. <laughs> I want to adequately represent this on the show, so I'm going to actually walk away from the mic. Okay, that's fair. And Ooh la la. Look at that Cheryl Teagues. That, that is a Cheryl Teagues poster. You know, I will say, I don't really understand how they expected her, expected her to sell bras when she's got so little to fill them. Yeah, no, she, you know, <laughs> I guess I didn't realize how skinny of a mini. And that, you know, probably made her, you know, I, you probably don't want somebody falling out of your product. Okay, but hear me out. Really in the Sears what you catalog. Want, I, here's what you, re- here's the thing. That's someone who doesn't technically need your product. What you need is someone who does need your product. Right. And the right size, no matter how, you know, how much is filling it, they won't fall out of. Uh, thank you, Santa. Yeah. Obviously, Santa listens to the show. <laughs> I guess he does. And listens to Whitney. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I- I'm just going to take a peek at the bottom here real quick. Yep, yeah. that's everything I figured it would be. <laughs> All right. You know, that'd be a great little uh, closet decoration. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great, like in Christmas Vacation, where he's got the poster above his bed. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't see the lines, can you, Russ? Funny. Well, wow. anyway. Anyway, 
Merry Christmas, Idaho Falls. Merry Christmas to you, Carly Morgan. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, Mike Nelson. Well, uh, Rango, your chihuahua, certainly is enjoying the excitement. He's yeah. deciding whether or not to beat these pieces of wrapping paper up. We're going to get a couple yard bags and clean all this up. <laughs> like you do for Christmas. And go have some eggnog and some of Kevin's mini Dickmans. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. We'll leave you with this footage of the UTV Light Parade, the first annual... And, and if you're wondering what a UTV was, because I'm not very sportsman I'm an avid indoorsman, okay? Same. Especially this time of year. I can't handle the cold. I think it's ultra-terrain vehicle, and they could also be side-by-sides. Mm. We're leaving you with some footage. It was Friday night, December 22nd, around the green belt. It was very pretty to look at. Enjoy. Merry Christmas. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to friends Heather and Max Metema for this sweet, sweet footage and commentary. Oh, look at the packages and Santa Claus's drive. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that tiny one! Ha, 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 ha.